Spark of Love and your congregation, a pastoral guide. So now that we've started a culture transformation, we're going to look at research on love and love at work by an organizational psychologist. And this is true culture work. Um, and it just validates the word of God. In real life events, coping with challenges often requires a strong support system. This system consists of people who genuinely listen and stand by you during difficult times. Family, friends, and colleagues can be crucial components offering both emotional and practical support. To build a culture of love, pastors can draw inspiration from studies like the Love at Work research by Sigal Barsaid. Implementing this in a church involves fostering an environment where members genuinely care for one another, creating a sense of belonging and support. To build a culture of love in the church inspired by the Love at Work study research, pastors can focus on fostering an environment where members genuinely care for one another, creating a sense of belonging and support. So I do want to say that the word love is broken down in the study. It's worth reading, and I do link it for you, what that means. And um, the God kind of love doesn't expect anything given back. The love that we know is we expect reciprocity. But what would it be like if we taught what the God kind of love truly is about. And there are different Greek words for love. So it's worth a study to look at that and to teach that and expound on this. Okay, so in this study, community building events, organize regular events that promote interaction and bonding among church members. It could be a potluck, small group discussion, community service projects to encourage a sense of togetherness. Pastoral counseling and support groups, establish counseling services and support groups within the church. This provides a safe space for individuals to share their struggles, fostering empathy and understanding within the congregation. Now, you may be nodding your head saying yes. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone in the church is seen as equal. That means the single people are seen as whole individuals and there isn't bias that the seniors are seen more, you know, in so many cultures, they're seen as elders, as the wise ones that we need to look to. Um, and it varies among cultures. So if we're hearing ourselves or members of the congregation, you know, speak, words, then we need to look at bias because we all have bias. This is when I'm going to plug the life skills for leadership because I talk a lot about microaggressions. Um, I talk a lot about the diversity and equity and inclusion. And again, that's a great concept that in many ways has become political. And um, in the world, we look at it and say, no, that's not good. There are real godly concepts in it. It's just the way that it's being implemented. Uh, it, I mean, God's not in it. So how can it be implemented in a godly way? But the principles of it are really good. And there is bias in the church. Uh, so everyone is equal and everyone's included and it's not oh we put this group over there because of our preconceived notions so that's that's another column that i have it's called life skills for leadership there are online courses uh, with video lectures that delve into this as well as culture work, it's called strategic leadership. So we also wanna encourage acts of kindness, promote a culture of kindness by encouraging members to perform acts of kindness for one another. This could be as simple as offering help to someone in need, expressing gratitude for others' contributions, that's in the happiness habits, how to do that, ideas. 
communication platforms, utilize modern communication platforms to strengthen connections, online forums, newsletters, social media groups can facilitate ongoing communication and provide a space for sharing joys, concerns, and prayer requests. We really want to monitor that because there's so much negativity on social media. There's a lot of bragging. Uh, so there's pride. So we want, if we have that, and it's people in the church, especially if it's church sponsored, someone needs to moderate it to intentionally establish culture and expectations there. Mentorship programs, established mentorship programs within the church, connecting experienced members with newcomers or those going through challenging times. This mentorship can provide guidance, support, and sense of belonging. We want to really be careful not to be controlling of people. I hear stories and I just nod my head and I listen and I validate their experience. I know that. Um, Churches are very well-meaning, but the experience of a person walking in who has known God historically and they're rededicating or they're just being woken up. God is waking up a lot of people right now. He's leading a lot of his people to repentance, to be ready to meet him when he comes back. And it's going to happen. People are going to walk in. They have great foundation and you might not know them, but God does. And so we want to make sure that we're not patronizing or saying you have to follow this uh, because really they have to follow what the church says. We have to follow what God says. And uh, there's, you know, if they want to come to your church, it's like you live in my house and you're going to live by my rules or you have to be outside. We really need to take that before the Lord with what does that need to look like and how can we modify that? Um, what would Jesus do? Really delve in to a deep dive in the word of God. There are times when I have questions. I have a lot of questions and I'll just ask the Holy Spirit and I'll read and I'm just reading the word of God like a book and things will pop out at me that I haven't noticed before in the same passages. That's him. It's him enlightening me, teaching me and answering my prayer. So I really recommend that you do that with how these, um, these prodigals are, but none of us are above that. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And, and really, have you been consistent with the Lord? Because when I look at statistics, and we do have a, a teaching on this, I look at statistics on porn and people in the church, as well as pastors, men and women. And, and so no one is above this. All of us need to repent and especially leaders with the saving face need a safe space to talk about these things. And so ooh, psychological safety, again, life skills for leadership is more of a professional at work. How do we apply these concepts? And I delve in those courses in these concepts. Um, we want to teach a series on love, develop sermon series or teaching sessions centered around the concept of love, use practical examples and real life applications to help members understand how to embody love in their daily lives. What does it look like? And talk about real things that are happening. Gossip. Talk about slander. Talk about defamation. Just look at social media. Look at social media of people in your church that you think, oh, they wouldn't hurt a fly. Okay. Are they walking in love? And that will give you a thermometer rating of, on how much you need to teach on this. Um, and, you know, I hear leaders say, I have a great church. It's a very supportful, great psychological safety. And that is fantastic. And so when you hear that, visit ask them, just become a curious person. So you can learn like, how did you establish that kind of culture? Uh, because they were very intentional about it. They were all over it and they continue to be all over it to have that. By incorporating these strategies, pastors can create an environment where love is not just a concept, but a lived experience. 
This culture of love strengthens the church community, providing a foundation for individuals to cope with life's challenges and celebrate each other's joys. Matthew 24, 12, sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. Um, so in the midst of daily life's challenges, this serves as a reminder. It warns that in a world where sin is prevalent, there's a risk that love may grow cold. In today's context, this can be seen in the face of various stressors, uncertainties, and divisive events that can easily harden hearts. Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, love. Love is patient. How much patience are we walking in? Love is kind. Love isn't jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Ooh, jealousy. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whether the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So that's the fruit of walking in him. This is a guiding light, a dynamic force to oppose and to soften and warm up the coldest of hearts. Pastors can relate these principles to current stressors in people's lives, emphasizes the need for patience and kindness in the face of adversity. The world is prideful and selfish and we want to have a culture where we're embracing selflessness and humility. Keeping no record of wrongs is really relevant where forgiveness and understanding are crucial because we have a lot of injustice, we have lawlessness, and we are the beacons of light to stand for truth, rejoicing when it prevails over falsehood. We need to incorporate teachings and practical insights into messages and guide the community towards a culture rooted in love. This is um, this will result in a powerful support system, warmth, compassion, and it's not just an abstract concept. It's not just a good sermon, but practical and transformative enduring through every circumstance. So atmosphere, just listen to these words, rooted in love, supportive atmosphere and repentance for individuals facing life's challenges. And in this study, Sigal Barsaid went to seven industries. It started in a long-term care facility and then it went across industries. So it was like finance and real estate. It wasn't just healthcare. And they focused on employees and how the employees treated one another. A lot of times we think of the customer and a lot of customer service is geared towards how do you treat the customer and the training. We also need to talk about the employees and how the employees treat one another and translate that to the congregation and how the congregation treats one another. Uh, then the world will flock to our churches. We don't need to do marketing because they'll see the love. They'll feel the love. They'll experience the love. They'll see how authentic it is. And they found that when the employees were practicing love and caring and compassion and listening towards one another, that the outcomes for the patients and the families of the patients improved. They also found that there was less absenteeism and people were happier to come into work. So if people are missing church, there may be a reason. I know we all have stressors or we want to watch football or go to the lake on a nice summer day, but it also could be the atmosphere that it's really stressing them out and they'd rather watch it online. And it's much better in person. Some of the, the way that they monitor this, like how did they get all this data? They observed. They had researchers there taking notes. And once you get used to somebody, you forget. And they really are like a fly on the wall. So it's a fascinating study. It's something to glean from. It's uh, this study, I use it in all of my corporate trainings. 
And it, it, it what I'm doing with these teachings is I'm taking the concepts and I'm blending them with the word of God. And I'm bringing them into the church, the how to build healthy culture, how to lead strategically, how to work with and um, foster community with multi-generations in a congregation. That's the purpose. And because they are um, concepts that have been proven through research, so it's empirical proven, proven to work with teams. And so why wouldn't it work with church when it's all aligning with the word of God? Um, so we're seeing synchronicity here. So Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for wisdom. We thank you for insights. Um, we thank you for research studies and psychology and science and faith and your word of God. Um, we're using everything that you're giving us because these times are challenging us and we're being distracted. And so are members of the congregation. And we're, we're experiencing stress. You said that men's hearts will fail them when they see what's coming upon the earth. We are in those times right now. And we need to focus and fix our eyes on you, the author and finisher of our faith. So we need every tool in our arsenal. And we thank you and we praise you you are good and your mercy endures forever. And I just see your goodness and we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name.